Mackenzie, Stinger's time. Stinger's time. It's time for Riot. Look at his face. Hey there, Internet. I'm Annie. I'm Kit. And I'm Mac. And this is the Gem Jam, where we do an episode by episode recap of the 1980s cartoon Gem and the Holograms, because both it and the comic are truly outrageous. And this week, you guys, they are truly riot filled. It's the Stingers! Enter the Stingers, part one, issue 19 of the Gem and the Holograms comic. Mackenzie screamed all day when this came out. I kept turning to Annie and going, So have you read it yet? And she's like, I didn't want to read it on my phone. Have you read it yet? No, I, I was going to do it at home. I stayed up to 12.05 a.m. on the release date and read it. Gem and the Holograms, Small Hours Club. They do that for Transformers. Now there is one for Gem. This is our first issue with our new regular series artist. This is Meredith McLaren, her debut issue. She'll be doing interiors from now on for at least the immediate future that we know of. It's a distinct departure from Sophie and uh, definitely different from what we've been getting with the last two issues with Bartel with her more uh, semi-realistic art style. It takes a couple pages to get used to it, but once you do, it's it's great. I really loved it and I found it really charming. It's really fun. Yeah, like she does amazing things with both like uh, poses and like action moves. And also my favorite are the faces. She's just really great at the faces. It's all really, really alive. I, I've heard some mixed reviews from people that I've talked to about it, but I think overall it's super different and that almost makes it easier to transition between artists in that it is so completely new and so completely not what we're used to that I'm really into it. I like what she does with hair. I love the sort of almost Muppety, peanutsy expressions that she does with the way that she pushes characters. Oh yeah. I'm a fan so far. And you're right. I really love the hair because especially like even if you just turn to the first page, I, I love how she does Jim's hair and how how it all seems to fall naturally, despite being obviously uh, more unnatural hairstyles. Yeah, Synergy is capable of rendering hair in real time in a way that, like, multi-billion dollar game studios are still figuring out. And that's why the Gem comic can't exist in the same universe as Transformers. Because they haven't figured out hair yet. Right, we should probably bring that up briefly. There is, like, a huge Hasbro property crossover thing I guess they are doing or are going to be doing in the comic books uh, with a lot of the, like, Inhumanoids and Transformers and G.I. Joe and what have you. They actually opted out for Gem, mostly because of stuff like this. It kind of takes away from synergy if you have giant robots walking around and hanging out and uh, using their... Uh, what's the mode that they have where they just have a little person avatar? The holoform. Yeah, holoforms. Gem's a holoform and that doesn't quite work if she's not unique. I mean, I can totally understand. It kind of removes the stakes of the whole thing if Synergy is not the most powerful computer in the universe. I still want a Transformers crossover. I will settle for an Elseworlds. It doesn't have to be in the main canon. And this is why we have fan fiction. Yes. I should make a self-insert character and join the Stingers. I mean, they're going to need a new drummer. They are. I could be the drummer. I was in Pit for years. Anyway, shall we get into the actual content? Shall we enter the Stingers? So let's shall. Yes, we... So previously, previously, uh, we had a giant band mashup between the, the Misfits and the Holograms, which Riot watched and thought was magnificent, or rather Jim was. I was just wondering why Jerrica is being Jim so often, even when nobody's around. We also get that one panel where Kimber points out how weird it is to have to put on regular clothes under your hologram clothes. Oh, and also Shane is quitting the band. Oh yeah, there's that thing. Yeah, Shana got an incredible internship in Milan, a fashion internship, and she has to break up with the band. For those of you who uh, listen to our cartoon episodes, which we have a lot of those, I hope it's you, you'll notice a lot of parallels in this issue uh, with a lot of the season two opening, where we entered Ray and where we had Shana going off to do a fashion thing. So keep an eye out for those as we come in here. We start with Kimber being dramatic. As usual. And Aja replies with, for once, I agree with your level of drama. All is as it should be. There's, there's a disconcerting level of Aja agreeing with Kimber in this issue. This is how you know that everything has gone wrong. Kimber and Aja are getting ready in the bathroom for a thing. And they're really out of sorts with this whole chain of leaving. And then Jem comes in wearing an incredible dressing gown. It's like part kimono, part evening gown. There's stars and flowers on it. The shoes are adorable. Her hair is adorable. Yeah, it's kind of like just rolled out of bed messy. 
Like she's trying really hard to look like she's not trying very hard. I like that her makeup kind of has the stars coming out of her eyes. It's adorable. And then they realize, wait a minute, wait a minute, you're Jem right now. Why are you Jem? We're looking up to make eye contact with you? Are your eyes actually up there? We don't know. And she says, I think the people at the edition are going to expect Jim, don't you? Besides, the band won't just be us playing anymore. We'll, uh, we'll be playing with a stranger, so I want to be Jim a lot more. We're all just going to have to get used to it. And Aja's just not sure she buys this. Yeah, I really love the expression that she has. Yeah, you can just tell based solely on Aja's facial expression that she doesn't totally buy this. Yeah, I like her body language in this page a lot. And she almost looks worried. Again, I think we're hearkening a lot back to her being the sort of, well, maybe not holograms in issue one. Though, I mean, Kimber's kind of stepped away from Little from, yes, holograms. Yeah, even Kimber's like, this is kind of weird. Also, we found out on the next page that Kimber has an adorable little, like, wicker teddy bear head purse. I need that. Someone find this for me. And they are apparently running late. Not too late for coffee, though, according to Aja. Not the way she drives, anyway. Yes, Aja for president. And Jem's just like, I guess you're president. And Aja's like, that's a downgrade Craig, let me be a god. I also still love that they're driving this freaking van because sometimes I forget that they don't have the rock and roadster. Uh, and also, Jem decides that she gets to sit up front. Jem calls shotgun. Kimber wanted shotgun. It's not happening. So this page also delighted me because Aja goes, hey, what about Craig? And we have Jim going, what about Craig? And she goes, what about Craig as our drummer? He's incredible. He could be Shana's replacement. And I immediately go, oh my gosh, it is the beginning of season two. Except in the very next panel when both Jim and Kimber are just, no way. And I was just like, why not? He's awesome. Yeah. And then we'd be without a drummer again when you dump him. Oh my God, I'm not going to dump him. She gets just straight peanuts with that face there. Oh, it's amazing. I love it. And then they head out and then we see Shayna back in the house. Her hair is super short now and sad. I don't know how you can make hair look sad, but here it is. Everything about Shayna is sad. She's kind of scooped forward with her drink, just looking sad. Oh my god, baby. It is season two. Now to the Misfits. So the Misfits are working on their next album and they're kind of working out the kinks with having a fifth band member and making sure everything functions right. And uh, this is also a page where we see a brand new way of doing the music stuff. And I really, really like it. Yeah, it's like musical bars with the lyrics painted over top. It's pretty cool looking. There's also like punk rock treble clef over there. I do kind of like that it's more like linear and regimented because they haven't quite figured out how the sound works. It looks just slightly wrong. That's true. I, I hadn't thought about that, but I like that interpretation. I also like it because the way that they're doing it here lends itself a little better to non-splash pages, which is where I feel that the usual musical style works best. And I kind of feel like this also works for a recording rather than, you know, you're performing for an audience, so it's a little bit more flashy. Yeah, this is going to be a little bit more regimented because they're practicing, they're going through the kinks and getting it all worked out. I like that. And then Pizzazz calls a stop to the rehearsal session, and she's like, okay, it's not working, let's figure it out. And this is one of the first times in that panel that we sort of see a lineup of the way the McLaren draws the misfits faces, which it seems like a lot of her diversity comes in her head shapes. And I like that she does very different things with all of those. Also, I'm, I'm really enamored with casual Stormer back there. We cut over to the recording equipment and the audio deck where Elise is arguing with Eric. She's right. It's not working, Eric. They'll figure it out, Elise. Just give them some time. They've got a new lineup. Takes a while to work out those kinks. And then Elise is like, yeah, but I hate this band. They're the worst. They're not worth it. She gives them 48 hours. Either they'll sound like the old Misfits or a new improved version, or they're going to be out on the streets. Elise is so great. I love her. I hate working with this band. Meanwhile, in a different recording studio in 5x5, here are the holograms. I told you I could get us here on time, says Aja. I stand corrected, oh mighty and powerful President God, says Jim. I like how Aja's just kind of mantled over her coffee. And this is actually the same recording studio. The Misfits were in A and this is in A. The Misfits got booted from their studio so the holograms could use it. This is going to go great. Oh my God, you're right. I hadn't even noticed that. So basically what they're doing is they're setting 
showing up for auditions and they're going to have these auditions with the people trying out the drums in uh, sort of the recording booth while they're outside. Shouldn't we be playing with them, like chemistry and stuff? And Elise is like, of course, but uh, we need to narrow it down to a handful and then we can bring them back in to audition with you, which makes sense. Yeah, I mean, they want to make sure these people can actually play drums. Yeah, and they're not just like... Some guy playing the William Tell Overture on his Ittle Vittle drum. Oh man, I'm so sad that guy didn't show up. I'm really sad that we didn't get the singer there. like, I love my mama! I love my dog! So as they start the auditions, we cut over to the Misfits having lunch and Pizzazz and Eric screaming at each other outside of the lunch place. It's just like in the cartoon. I also think that it's important uh, whenever we see a new artist on Gem, it's important to know how they draw Elise and how they draw Eric. This Eric Raymond is uh, still a Megane. He's slightly less of a fancy pop star Megane that we had in Dark Gem. This one is weary. He's got like a little scarf that's dangling down under his jacket. Oh god, he does. I thought that was a vest, but you're right. That's a freaking scarf. And he is 900% done with everything. This is an Eric Raymond who has gone through Dark Gem and has come out the other side tired of all this. And Eric is suggesting that they kick Blaze out and just go back to what they had before. And I was like, no! And then Pizzazz is like, no, you can't go backwards with music. Also, we should keep Blaze. Yeah, because Blaze is great. Blaze is great. And Eric's like, you've got 48 hours to figure this out. You don't have time to figure it out with Blaze. Pizzazz goes, we literally cannot win. And he's like, I know you're being punished for past behavior. So in a way, we only have yourselves to blame. She goes, oh, please, we're rock stars. We can't be angels. And then in come a couple of fans. Oh, God, Pizzazz's face when they start talking at her. Oh, my God, you're Pizzazz. Can we take a picture with you? And then we get this, like, enormous, amazing green Pizzazz shriek skull. It looks like some kind of freaking Oni that she summoned. This is like a freaking Bakemono. I've seen this tattooed on people. I also love it because Eric is looking at it like, oh, this again. This is how McLaren does like the raptor shriek or at least the silent raptor shriek. And I'm so into it. It's like she just summoned something out of the abyss. And then Pizzazz lunges at the rest of the crowd. Eric stops her while she screams, stop filming me or I'll shove that phone so far before Eric manages to cover her mouth. And then all the other misfits are leaning to look out at them while Eric looks panicked. Yep, I love that Blaze looks like she is about to die. Stormer looks concerned. Roxy's taking a photo and Jetta is just got like her hand in her head and is just watching everything happen. She's not surprised. She's here for the spectacle. And then they start talking amongst themselves about what set Pizzazz off. Jetta in particular is a little upset that the character development that they thought they saw during Dark Gem when Pizzazz made her triumphant return doesn't seem to have taken. Stormer sticks up for her because Stormer's the best. But otherwise they're like, nah, it's, it's same old Pizzazz. Never mind. This is the same as she always was. Blaze doesn't really know this Pizzazz though, so she's more willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. And then it's back to the recording studio. Where they're not very happy with the drummers they've gotten. They're they're pretty good, but of course they're not going to replace Shayna because they had a connection with Shayna. It's hard for them to make decisions. Luckily, Elise is here to tell them what they think. We think Nikki and Micah and Watts were the best options. We should bring them back for a second edition. I love that she opens that with, what did you ladies think? And says, we think this. And then when all the holograms just kind of look at each other, Elise just sighs. Is this going to be a problem, ladies? You know that no one is ever really going to be able to replace your sister, right? We know. Great. Then pick a drummer. I love Elise so much. Jem heads out to talk to Elise about something. And she hears the glorious voice of Riot. It's beautiful. And it attracts her attention and she just has to follow it. She walks as though in a trance down to another recording studio. Where she finds Elise and a sound guy listening to some other people sing. She says, wow. And we see the stingers. Have you heard of the stingers? Very hot new band. They're working on a new single. Just relocated to Los Angeles. We're trying to sign them and won some rehearsal space. Figured it was the least we could do. Of course, we had to bump. And then Pizzazz pops in and goes, me? They bumped Pizzazz. You'll remember that Pizzazz has encountered these guys before where she was going to play a pop-up show. And that did not happen. Because stingers. So yeah, Gem and the Holograms were supposed to use Studio B, but they moved the Stingers into Studio B, so they kicked the Misfits out of Studio A and put the Holograms in there, and Pizzazz is mad. This next page is totally great. 
we see the stingers from behind as they're looking into the mixing station outside of the recording studio booth. As they're singing their song, enjoying, Pizzazz has this incredible, like, freaking demon that's made out of, like, a coyote skull. And then Jem gets her own coyote skull. Oh my god, I love that, though. I love how big the one gets while she is screaming. Riot just kind of focuses his gaze with love as he's singing My Queen, and we also see Jim on the other side of the page. As Jim screams at Pizzazz, and Riot's like, yep, that's the one. That's the one. That's my lady. <laughs> I'm gonna make a glam rock baby with that one. We see almost none of the rest of the stingers here. If we have any lines, they're usually from Minx or Rapture for the rest of this issue, aside from Riot. And as we come out of the booth, we sort of get the feeling of this because Minx and Rapture are sort of admiring the chaos and having good time and Ray's just in the background like with a little question mark above her head it's amazing set of lungs on the green one huh I'll say though pink isn't bad either and then Riot wades in to just introduce himself to Jem Jem such a pleasure to finally meet you I'm Riot Jem is completely starstruck his voice is so beautiful you followed my voice sounds like something from a fairy tale don't you think And then the other holograms wander in and it's like, this room is not big enough for this. Riot, these are my my bandmates, Kipper and Aunt Aja. Definitely not my sisters, we're not related. Pleasure, ladies, says Riot, focusing on Jim, who is, again, starstruck so that she has stars all over her head. So, like, in the cartoon, especially in the first episode or so with the Stingers, Riot almost seems to have some kind of fey glamour going on. Like, literally the first episode he's introduced, he's singing and literally causes a riot as everybody, man and woman alike, stands up and just starts throwing tables around and screaming. Jim is like, oh my gosh, this chaos is so bad. And he stands up and he goes, everybody, listen to the sound of my voice. Listen and sit, please. Do not cause this chaos anymore. And everybody listens and fixes everything. There's something weird going on with Riot. It's never really explained, aside from him just being that enchanting. Is he like a literal changeling? He might be. We're not sure. Was the real Riot traded away for this? And what's great about it is we'd heard about Riot. We heard that he was a great character, that he kind of was like a big beefy guy with blonde hair. And we were like, well, no way is he going to live up to our expectations. And then that happened. And me and Andy were like, he passed our expectations. We've definitely got a lot more to talk about with Riot that we'll get into when it actually comes up in the comics, but rest assured, this is basically what we were expecting here. And look, Kit, tell me, just in this issue alone, though, wouldn't explain a lot that Riot is a literal changeling baby. I mean, there's nothing that says he isn't. So... Pizzazz turns to Elise and is like, so are we done? You have like no more room at the inn or whatever? Yeah, sure. Biblical references. That's nice and low key. Good job, Pizzazz. Meanwhile, she's got this storm cloud building up on the other side of her head. I just love the visual representations of Pizzazz's rage in this. Yeah, McLaren really goes all out for it in this issue and I'm into it. Also, she shoves Kimber. Out of the way, Kimber. Like that's the one she knows by name. So much for our super fun team up making us BFFs. Yeah, I guess that truce is over. Meanwhile, Riot's focused on making Jim happy. What was that all about? Just a miscommunication. Pizzazz and I have never gotten along. I thought we'd agree to an uneasy peace, but apparently not. War is back on the table, I guess. What can I do to help? Oh, nothing. Don't be silly. We can take care of it. But thank you. That's very kind. And then I'll just like, Jim, we gotta go. Coming. Oh my god. Oh my god. The next page, though. Oh, Riot, don't be such a silly Billy. Whatever, I didn't sound anything like that. This is the panel that completely sold me on this style. Aja's driving, she just puts her hand on her breast, you know, spreads the fingers delicately. Oh, Riot, there's like musical notes and hearts coming out of every orifice. And then that panel next to it where Jem is just so, so sulky and mad. I could literally not even tell the difference, says Kimber. As she's on her phone. I love that Kimber hangs out in cars in the exact same way that I hang out in cars, which is sitting up straight as for chumps. It must be nice to not be in a car and want to throw up all the time. That must be magical. I was just like, okay, seriously, what was that? You didn't hear him sing. It was incredible. I'm allowed to be human, right? Starstruck for a second. Okay, that was way more than a second. What Kimber said. And why are you still Jim, Jerick? It's weird. (laughs) Again, I agree with Kimber. Either the world's coming to an end or girl is on point today. Probably both. And then Jem decides to just shows over synergy and does the thing that we always imagined would happen. Which is that some dude at the driver's seat of his car sees her and then immediately leans over on his steering wheel going, I need to get more sleep. 
It is not a good day for this man. Poor guy. So on the next page, while we're having a big car conversation, we get this thing that I really like, which is, okay, it's hard to do car scenes. It's hard to do those. They're a small enclosed space. There's all this crap in the way. And I like what McLaren set up here. Yeah, she kind of does like a uh, cutaway. Like she just lifts it off the top and the side of the van. And I like it a lot. Plus it makes more room for a lot of the text that they're going to have on that page without it being awkward or clunky or getting in the way of too many faces, which is definitely hard. Like the letterer also did a really good job with these car conversation pages. Those are tough. So they're trying to decide whether they should tell Shayna that the audition went badly or not. And like on the one hand, if they pretend that everything went great, Shayna will feel bad. But on the other hand, if they're honest and say it went terribly, Shayna will feel guilty and want to stay. And they don't want Shayna to stay when she's got this cool opportunity. So it's like, great, what do we do? It's that really difficult line that you tread between being honest and saying what needs to be said when you consider someone else's feelings. Which, this is something that does happen in that beginning of season two, but I think this is more, well, this is obviously more well done, because in that season two, it was just like, oh, let's go get a new drummer. Okay, it's competition time. Bye, Shanna. I know we're going to miss you. Yeah, and we don't see till after the fact that they were trying to push her away. And I like that we're having this conversation beforehand. Hopefully it won't be so much white fanging. Don't you understand? We don't want you anymore. You have to be with your own kind. The fact And then we come back to the stingers. Oh, God. And Riot even has an effect on Elise, and it's amazing. I love it. I'm so delighted. Elise, the woman who is usually so completely in control. I mean, I know she's trying to, like, get them to sign here, but... And then Riot comes up and just kind of puts her arm around her, and she looks so confused and terrified. Why is he touching me? And she's like, well, you know how competitive the industry is. There's nothing that can't be overcome. He goes, oh, I'm certain of that. Elise, darling, I'll tell you what. I've discussed it with Minx, Rapture, and Rhea, and five by five records can have the singers. We'll sign with you exclusively on one condition. First, you drop the misfits. And then we pan down to Pizzazz spying on this meeting, which I'm pretty sure that's soundproof glass, but okay. She's got this great look on her face with like the little red rings around her pupils as she says, all right then, war it is. And I think it's like the same kind of eyes that we had with her at the end of issue six with all right misfits, this means war. I feel like war is her go-to way more often than it should be. I also really like in that shot, first off that this is cut into three panels and we have the first one of the booth and then we pan down to the same shot of Pizzazz below it before we do the zoom in. But I like in that shot of the booth that again, Minx is amused, Rapture is coyly delighted and definitely seems like she's looking right out to where pizzazz is and Rhea is very concerned i love the stingers and that's our issue i love that riot's already morally gray on behalf of jim especially i love it i love that he's clearly some kind of fairy child i love his princess hair he's very much all of the things that i liked in the cartoon riot in the cartoon from what i've seen of his character's design he's like a perfect storm of 80s masculinity tropes especially when it comes to the female gaze and now this riot is also a perfect storm of modern masculinity tropes when it comes to the female gaze john's been reading up on jojo's bizarre adventure and the recent hardback re-releases they've been doing of that comic has little bits from the artist as well as redrawn characters on the front and what that artist is talking about how like well i made all these very pretty manly men back in the 80s because it was all like the Schwarzenegger, Stallone kind of look. That was what was popular with handsome men. And now I think I draw them very differently. And these sort of redrawn, reimagined versions that he does on the cover are all very much reminiscent of this riot shift. (laughs) Riot. I love Riot. I'm not sure if I've made that abundantly clear. No, Mackenzie, we couldn't tell. I think you had an enormous amount of restraint in this recording session and that you weren't screaming the entire time. You're welcome. I commend you. I wanted to. You want to get it out of your system? No. You sure? I want to hold it for the next issue. I mean, we're going to get a story arc here. There's a lot of Riot coming up. Oh my god. You're our foremost Riot fan here. What's your hot take? My hot take is that he's wonderful. He's morally gray. They've got him, as you've said, updated to like a more modern sensibility, but he's still got like the luscious princess locks going on. And I just love it because he's doing bad things to characters that we love and he's doing it for a reason because he's like, oh, I want to impress Jim. If I can get rid of the misfits, this will help her. And I love it. And I love that for this time, Jim's like actually kind of wooed by him rather than in the cartoon where she's immediately like, no, I love Rio. 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 Rio is a god king among men. Everybody should love Rio, even though in this 
show he's kind of an abusive asshat. It's definitely going to make the choice between the two much less clear considering Rio in this one is, you know, a decent character. It has also made it very clear he likes Jerrica, but not Jim. Wait, wait, wait. She could have both. She could have both. We're going to need to update our shipping chart. With the implicit understanding that Riot Rio would also be a thing? Obviously. Look at those pretty boys. I mean, they probably hate each other, but they would fight and then kiss angrily. Oh, man. I'm really excited about this arc, you guys. And I think for anyone who may be a little off put by McLaren's sort of very different art style, I'd say definitely give it a few more issues just to sort of see if that's sort of your thing. I mean, it's okay if it's not. Everybody has preferences, but I'm into it. It took me a little while to get into it, but about halfway through the issue, I was like, no, I'm sold. I mean, it probably helps that we've reread this one for the podcast a few times. Just for the podcast, you think? How many times are you up to now? I think I'm up to like 12. Okay, that sounds right. I'm very excited to see more of Rhea. I'm excited for her to have like more than a line. They didn't do much with Rhea in the first issue. So if she's going to become a hologram, they need to do a lot more with her over the arc. The Gem Jam comes out every Sunday on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and YouTube. You can find us on Twitter and Tumblr as well. Uh, we are at the Gem Jam just about everywhere, except on Twitter where we are at Gem Jam Cast. If you like what we do and you want to support us, a like, rating, review, subscribe, wherever you find our podcast, especially on iTunes, are super helpful. We need to spread the word of the singers. Spread Spread the stingers gospel. Have you heard the word? Stink, stink, stingers. If you have a couple of bucks sitting around, you can send those our way at patreon.com slash the gem jam. It makes us very happy. Regardless of what you do, though, we love you all the same. But not as much as I love Riot. Sorry, guys. Mac, if you ever get married, that's going to be in your wedding vows. I love you and I will respect you and cherish you and honor you but not as much as Riot. Also, uh, good news, bad news. Bad news is there's not going to be an episode next week, and the good news is it's because we're going to be at Geek Girl Con presenting a panel. It's uh, on the Sunday, October 9th, in the Furiosa Room at 12 o'clock. So if you're going to be in the area, or if you're planning to attend Geek Girl Con, maybe check it out. Join us next time, next comic issue, for more stingers, more screaming, more Riot. Until next time, dear listeners, I'm Annie. I'm Kit. And I'm Mech. And this has been the Gem Jam, where we're remind you to let outrageous dogs lie.